The Small Business Show, episode 221 for Wednesday, May 1st, 2019. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is by, for, and about small business owners here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. A little travel to Chicago back and forth this weekend, but I'm um, back in yeah. the saddle here. Yeah, it's all good. We're yeah. uh, we're both doing that college tour thing again with our boys this time, That's right? correct. Yeah, I yeah. forgot. Yeah. That's right. You and I are both in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah. We yep. did a couple over the spring break as well. And so, you know, exciting times. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> It's interesting. It's one of those things that is, I'm like completely terrified by it and simultaneously totally like go with the flow on the whole thing yeah that's right it's going to be awesome but it's going to be different <laughs> yeah I, you know owning you know. a small business made me not worry about the massive crazy expensive college because you deal with these things like sometimes where it's like all of a sudden you got to spend like 50 grand on something yeah. it's like you know these numbers are just numbers and you, you, just, you sort of right. you figure it out you figure it sounds it out. like we need to do we need to do a show about that we do <laughs> that's yeah that's but not this show because yeah that's right yeah yeah so hey uh if you recall, if you uh, our listeners, if you know, we've had some awesome guests over the years, and, and one of our we had two uh, founders on of a company called Tangle Free Waterfowl, and these guys are local to me. Great, have become great friends. Uh, I typically you know go out with them once a month. We have lunch and talk business and this kind of thing. And they started bringing uh, one of their guys with them that, that works for them. Uh, his name is Kirk Lasala. And, uh, you know, I started talking to Kirk and, and I knew, you know, man, this guy's great. He's got a lot of knowledge. Every time we go, we get on some kind of topic uh, and just go dive deep in it, you know, and everybody else is kind of glazing over. And I'd be like, oh, tell me more, tell me more. And so I'm really happy to have Kirk here with us today to talk about digital marketing and, you know, how he's, you know, worked within these various platforms. But in addition, you know, Kirk's also started a few different companies and he's had a really great and very interesting entrepreneurial uh, experience that we can, I think, share with us today. So, Kirk, thanks so much for joining us today. We're really happy to have you. You bet, man. I'm, I'm super stoked to be talking with you guys today. So yeah, thanks for great. having me. I have a ton of questions, you know, <laughs> I, I'm always, I always say at the end of these shows, you know, I'm learning, I'm learning the most. So, you know, we share all this information. So let's start with just a little bit of your background. Just give us a quick overview of kind of how you got started in, you know, in this digital marketing uh, space, uh, business experience and how you wound up, uh, you know, where you are today. Yeah, you bet. So, um, it's actually uh, a bit of a story of desperation. Um, <laughs> we've, I, all been, we've all been there. <laughs> when I when I uh, graduated high school, I was going to go to DVC, which is community college in the Bay Area, and then I was going to transfer from there uh, to either stay wherever I got into. And my folks came to me um, after I graduated, and they said, "You know, we're we're going to uh, pay for your tuition to get." for college, which I'm super thankful for. Uh, but you're going to have to pay for like your living expenses. And so you fast forward two years and I show up to, I got into UC Santa Barbara. I show up there with literally a thousand bucks Wow! and my rent's 300 bucks a month. And I'm thankfully I'm living with my, my older brother, Brent. Um, and, and so I had basically three months and a hundred bucks for beer <laughs> and, and nice. I was going to be, I was going to basically be out of money. And, and I also want to apologize to my parents if they hear this, cause they don't know that part of it. But so <laughs> when I got down there, um, my brother actually helped me. He had already graduated Santa Barbara and he, he was kind of helping me like whatever, buy food and that sort of thing. And I was feeling a little bit bad about it. And so I started, my parents sent me with a, uh, a laptop. And, uh, and so I started trying to look for ways to make money online and I came across affiliate marketing. And so I signed up, uh, with one of the affiliate companies to, uh, basically try to figure out how to drive online transactions and earn a commission to make some sort of money. Yeah. And, and so I started doing that and it took me a little bit. It took me probably like four months to make any sort of money. 
But what it did was, is it just absolutely opened my eyes to this, like this whole new world of marketing that I'd, I've never even known about, you know, marketing to me was all the traditional stuff, radio, you know, print, billboards, that sort of thing. And uh, I really just absolutely loved it. And I was able to, to earn, you know, anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to 500 bucks a month by uh, through affiliate marketing. And I, uh, and so I did that for a while and it was just like barely making ends meet. And then um, there was a company that was local to Santa Barbara called Citrix Online uh, that sold software, like all the go-to products, go to my, go to my PC, go to meeting, go to assist all those. Oh yeah, sure. And so I, um, I ended up getting an internship there cause I kind of wanted to further my knowledge in, in the digital marketing side of things. Smart. And, uh, they, they actually put me stuffing envelopes. So that was my internship. I was stuffing envelopes that were going to be sent off to folks. I was making calls, um, to remind people of webinars that they signed up for. And I was just kind of, you know, I don't know. I was, I was making money, which was fine. So I was able to kind of cover my costs. And, uh, but I ended up through that internship talking to more folks in the marketing department and was able to secure an internship doing search marketing. So that's, that's kind of how, where it all started. Um, and, and then from there, uh, when I graduated, I got a full-time job managing the, the search marketing side of the business. I mean, it was, it was insane at this time. Uh, you know, it was, it was probably 2003 when I first started doing affiliate marketing, by the time that I was managing the search marketing side of the business was 2005, 2006 ish. And, uh, and it, back then, I mean, AdWords was absolutely insane. And we were also doing overture, which was basically Yahoo. Right, Yahoo. Yeah. 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 And, um, and I mean, it was just crazy. It was literally like printing money back then it was just no one like for whatever reason there wasn't a lot of competition and uh and i learned a ton and so then i decided at the end of 2006 that i wanted to start my own business and i wanted to bring this all this knowledge that i learned and apply it to the small business because i felt that there was a huge opportunity there and so i created um a little like what i refer to as an agency with one person in it but um and started, you know, tried to, to basically sell my services and also provide my services at the same time. And I never really, you know, I, I, I did it for probably about three years or so. And I was living with my parents. I moved back to with my parents and I really just wanted to do this. And I was making out of, out of college, I was making pretty decent money right out of college, but I just didn't feel like it, I didn't just, I just didn't feel like fulfilled. I was, I was one of 30 in a marketing department. I see. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I, I really, you know, I, I, I made a little bit of money here and there, but nothing that was ever what I, what I wanted to do. And I also realized, um, you know, pretty early on that the, the, the only way to really scale a service oriented business is by hiring people. And, you know, I knew obviously the e-commerce side with software uh, transactions and that sort of thing. And like you could go from freaking zero customers to a thousand overnight if you spend enough money or if you get the exposure. And it's really, you know, outside of maybe server uh, capabilities and that sort of thing. I mean, you can scale the business quickly and overnight. And so from there, I just, you know, was starting to think about getting back into e-commerce and eventually one day, you know, starting my own thing. And, awesome. and yeah, so that's kind of, um, I guess that's a little bit more, but that's, no, it makes sense. No, that, this is great because you, it started and you, you use this word, but it's the right word. It started with desperation, right? You, yeah. your back was against the wall. You had to do something and it had to be something that you could do around your class schedule because you didn't want to, you know, muff that all up. Right. So like th this was this is so many small business owners find themselves in this scenario. And honestly, the ones that do are usually the ones that m are more likely to succeed because 
your uh, your back's against the wall. You've got to do yeah. something as opposed to if, you know, you're flush with funds and it's like, well, I could play with this or play with that. Sometimes those work and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But but mm-hmm. you need to already have the drive. This gave you that drive. Right. Because you, you had no other choice. And <laughs> no you, other choice. Right. No <laughs> other choice. But that's how you learn drive like we all have it in us to do something like this it's just do you do you learn that you act do you learn to trust it and at first you didn't but it was the only thing you had so you might as well trust it because uh nothing else was happening so <laughs> off you go yeah. and I, that, that's it that it really, yeah it's great yeah. and i and I, I the other comment i wanted to make is what i hear when you tell this this you know the story of your journey there is being an early adopter is really important. And when you talk about the early affiliate marketing, early AdWords and Overture, and you're right, like I, we were by, I was doing the same similar thing. Dave and I ran a very successful affiliate based business for a decade uh, before the market got super crowded. And the same thing with like the AdWords and everything. When, you know, you remember you could buy keywords for a nickel, right? Yeah. It was and so were, easy. Because nobody in knew about it. It, it didn't in feel easy at the time. We, yeah. we had to do the work, but all you had to do was the work. You didn't have to be lucky. <laughs> yeah. So it's awesome in that you, you know, you took the risk. You t- and we're going to talk more about risk and taking, you know, uh, uh, you know, leaps of faith and that kind of stuff as we go on. But, uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, I commend you uh, that, you know, just continuing to power through. OK, this is leading to this. And now I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. Uh, so we'll, we'll circle back, but, but you, you wound up eventually working for, uh, our friends at, at Tangle Free a, along the way you're doing some other stuff as well and still doing some other stuff that we're going to tap on. So tell us what you do now. Yeah. At Tangle Free. Yeah. So, um, so right now my, my title is director of marketing for okay. Tangle Free. Um, but it's, 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 it's funny. I laugh because it's, yeah, I have that title and, you know, I also am the trenches guy. So I do, I do all the work as well. I'll sit down with Dougie, Corey and, and Stacy and we'll talk, you know, strategy, put together our calendar as far as what we're going to hit, you know, marketing wise, messaging, all that stuff. And then uh, I'm the one that's to go back to my desk and then actually execute on it. And so I also, um, through, through the, my starting that business, the agency side of things, I, out of necessity, had to learn web development as well. So I have a background in web development and also had to learn the creative side of things in order to provide like a real true service to, to my clients. And so, um, I, so because I, I, I have, I have like all the, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging or anything. Cause I'm not, I'm just no, saying sure. that like, I, I have all the skill set to manage the website, to drive the traffic, to do all the creative side of the business as well, which is why, like, I feel like I'm, I'm a perfect fit for a small business because yeah, I enjoy awesome. it. Like I absolutely enjoy doing that. So that's, so that's what my title is director of marketing, but I also execute on everything, every side of the marketing or every piece of the, the marketing side of the business. Yeah. And just like I thought, Corey and Doug don't do anything. So <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. I'm going to bring up and mention that to them next time. And when they listen to this, I want to be sure they can hear that. <laughs> you know, you, you said something, though. You said out of necessity, I had to learn. And you said web development. Yeah. But but that like. Like you could insert a lot of things in there. That is that small business mentality out of necessity. I had to learn not um, I didn't know. So I like could I I couldn't figure it out. Trusting that you can figure it out is is that that small business like get it done mentality. And I'm I'm reminded of Elon Musk. Right. With SpaceX. He was like, well, I couldn't afford to hire the best rocket scientist. So out of necessity, I had to learn how to be a rocket scientist. Which he did. Now, I don't know if I could become a rocket scientist, but, you know, he didn't qu- he didn't ask himself that question. And you didn't ask yourself that question either. You just went and did it. And that's like th- and now you're you have you are a more valuable person in the marketplace because you did that. And that's a huge thing. Just go figure it out. That mentality and, is the key. Yep. Yeah. And, and honestly, like when I when I w- tried, you know, to do the web development side of it it was it 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 wasn't like looking like you know 
hindsight, all that, it's like, oh yeah, now I'm like a way more well-rounded, you know, marketing guy. But it was literally going from a company that had endless amount of resources from a creative side, from a web development side right. to, and then it was like this punch in the face when I would hook into a small business that literally had no resources and it was, okay, let's put together a search campaign. Do you have a website? And it's like, actually, I don't, you know, or uh, do you have landing pages that we can drive this traffic to? Actually, I don't. And, you know, is there someone that we can work with from a design perspective? Like, no, you know, and so yeah. it was, okay, let me control the full process. I've done so much testing at Citrix and I know what, what you know, for the most part works and I know how to implement it. Uh, or at least, you know, I know in my head how it should go, but now I need to, I need to have that skill set to actually do the work. And so it was just, yeah, literally out of necessity to make, to make the company more valuable or yeah. which is me, I guess, at the end of the oh, day. And it, it, it's continually adding to your talent stack. Like yeah. uh, our friend Scott Adams always talks about, you know, oh, you don't need to be an expert at one thing. You need to learn these different skills, you know, along the way. And it serves you really well. Yeah, it's funny. I was actually, I was telling, uh, uh, it was like a friend of a friend. He was asking me what I do. And it's really hard for me to say what I do and with, and not like, I don't know, I, I don't want to come across Talk like for a half an hour. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, and it's like, I don't know. And so I, I told them kind of the same thing that I told you guys, which is like, well, you know, I can do this, that, the other thing. And he's like, well, it sounds like you're, so you're like mediocre at everything. I'm like, yeah, all right. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. But, no, yeah. but I, was that person a business owner? Uh, no, no, I would, I would argue that, a, yeah. right. A, as a yeah. business owner, you'd be like, that's awesome, man, because I know I, I have to do all these things too, you know, and, <laughs> and, and manage that stuff. You get the concept, but a lot sure. of people don't. And when I hear you say, oh, it's kind of hard to describe what I do. I have had that same problem my whole life, you know, of, well, uh, let's see, I do a little of this. I have to do this. And when, you know, when the truck shows up at 5 p.m. and needs to be unloaded, I have to go out there and unload, unload the That's truck right. too. That's and, right. You know, so that those are good things in this crowd. You, you're in a safe space here when you talk like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, because, honestly, the people know, that, that are that see themselves as above unloading the truck – most of the yeah. time, you're not going to be successful, man. You got to like it's got to get done. Yeah, unless you've yeah, already paid it. somebody, it's not that you're yeah. above it. It's that you've you've already delegated it out. But if it if you didn't, guess what? The buck stops with you. Go unload the truck. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. That's it. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So so let me ask you one thing that has just constantly haunts me, and and I'll speculate. There's a lot of small business owners listening that have the same question. Is I'm always uh, like second guessing where I'm, if where I'm focusing my efforts is the right place, yeah. especially now, do I put money and time into more Facebook ads? Do I focus on Twitter or should my ad words be this, uh, you know, so for small business owners, to your point earlier, that don't have a lot of resources, how do you figure out, you know, where is the best place to focus your limited time and budget? Yeah, for sure. So I like for me, if it's, if it's something, so actually let's take a step back. Like if, if it's, so the way that I look at it is like this uh, push versus pull perspective, which it, it depends on what the product is. So like if, if it's a, if it's a product and, and this is in terms of like where, if you, if you don't have any data and you're starting out, like you're starting this new business and, uh, you know, you have this product idea that you're going to try to sell something um, that if it's a, a product that is maybe a different approach on an existing people know about this product, but maybe it's unique in some various ways, or it might be a product that no one has ever like heard of. And it's, you know, whatever, truly innovative. And, you know, someone hasn't done it, which is typically pretty rare, but either way, there's like for sure on, on the product that people, you know, if people are actively looking for something that is the product that you provide, whether it's a you know different spin on it or not, or whatever, that it's, it's really, in my mind, it's a home run to, to start with something like search, 
right? Because you have, you have, there's millions of people searching uh, probably for this product, right? If it's a, if it's a common product. Okay. Um, but then on, on the other side of that is that if you have this product, like the, there's this, the company that I created with my brother, which there's like, there's maybe a product that's similar, but it's a totally different application. Um, and we needed to put it in front of people because no one's looking for this. Like literally there's zero, we, we tried search and there's no one looking for exactly what we've created. And so then you're, you know, and that, that would be like the push side of it. So now we're trying to put it in front of folks, um, based on their demographics. And so we started with Facebook as an example okay. on that side of it. That makes but, per- Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to sort of distill what you said here because this is the key, right? If you can find people looking for something that you've created, search marketing makes sense. Otherwise, if you need to go tell people about it, you need to do some push, some branding, if you will. Facebook lets you do that targeted brand. I mean, there's other places you can do targeted branding, too, like on a podcast. Absolutely. Right. But yeah. but like, th- like thinking about it that way, that that really helps narrow it down. Obviously, you could do both. But if you've got limited budget and you got to pick one, ah, this makes sense. I like it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and then if it's, so you have an existing business where you're driving traffic through some specific channels, um, you know, the, one of the things that, that I like to leverage is, is basically a chart of, you know, putting all the things in, putting all, uh, your, what you think are action items for the business, whether it's the marketing side or even the entire business, in uh, some sort of chart, which basically measures them based on, you know, highest impact to the business financially and the least amount of time to implement. And so things that sit in the highest impact, you know, you may have uh, Facebook, you may be running Facebook marketing and you're hitting a 10 to one. And that's the metric that that you want to be hitting in order to be profitable Um, from a cost of marketing perspective, applying more budget to that to scale it could be an option, right? And that's easy to implement. So that's a high impact to the business and super easy. I mean, you're talking about changing a budget, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, No time at all. Yep. Right. So those are the things when you start, if you have data from the business where you're currently driving traffic and you have, you know, all your analytics set up to know, from a performance perspective that this is working or maybe it's not working, um, that that's how you would, you know, obviously allocate your time. And and a majority of my time, um, is focused on, you know, the top, the the things that are having the highest impact to the business. And so that's just kind of how, you know, that's how we, we roll. That's how I roll. I I work for a, a lean six Sigma consulting firm where I ran marketing for that consulting firm. And the, they refer to that chart as a pick chart. Um, and that's where I learned about that and loved it ever since I implemented it. So, um, that's typically how I like organize, you know, the, the, that's awesome. yeah. yeah, that's great. That, that's, that's some great advice that it's very actionable. I like that. Yeah. Either the, the polar pish the or, polar, or, polar push. Polar I never push. thought of it yeah. that way. Cause I mean, yeah. really you're pushing to both of them, but, but thinking about it separately, pull or push is really a, a good way to look at it. Oh, man, it's so smart. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, we'll let that sound go by there. So while we're ta- on this topic and you were talking about, you know, uh, this, this product that you're involved in that, you know, nobody was searching for, so you had to put it out. Let, let's talk about that for, for yeah. a minute. So, like, you know, uh, one of the things I always told my employees is that they should have, and, and I tell everybody this, you should have something going on on the side, something, mm-hmm. you know, and they, oh, I don't have time, whatever. And I, and I would always ask them one question, well, do you watch TV? And if, and over, of course they all say, yes. I say, well, don't, don't watch TV. And there's your time, create something, try something, experiment. Uh, even if you fail, you're going to learn a ton. And so you have done that a few times, like Dave and I have had failed a few times, yeah. uh, you know, had some success. And so, this product, uh, Look at Mommy, and you can find out more at lookatmommy.com. Yeah. Tell, tell us how, how that got started and how you use the digital marketing to push that product out. Yeah, 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 for sure. So um, so my brother, my brother and I have, have 
have dabbled in photography. I wouldn't call myself a photographer. My brother's way more talented, but, um, you know, at the time that we were talking about when, like before this business had started, I was doing really well, uh, with Facebook marketing and, you know, had some great success with selling, selling product. And, and we started looking at, it's kind of like, it's almost the reverse of how you, how people start a business. Like most people start a bit, or maybe I'm totally wrong, but this is what I, what I feel that like most people start a business, um, with this, like, you know, need to solve some sort of problem or something that they're passionate about or, or whatever it might be. But for, for us, it was, we looked at audiences that we could target on Facebook. And one of the, the, one of the things that we could easily target was mothers with kids at any age that you wanted. And so, uh, being that we both are like really like photography and, and somewhat into it. Um, my brother actually came up with the idea uh, and he's like, look, I, I, I think I have a, an idea for, you know, there's, there's also this problem that both my brother and I had, which was taking photos of our kids, which was like impossible, you know, and especially if there's multiple kids, I mean, they don't look at, they don't look at your phone when you're, when you're snapping the shot. And so my brother came up with this idea, which was take an LED light, ring light, and then put hair on it, put some ears on it and some eyes. And then, you know, and, and basically now you have something that can capture the attention of your kids. And, and when my brother and his wife and his mother-in-law created the first one and they used it on his kids, it, it absolutely worked. And so um, literally in, I think it was a week's time from, you know, talking to Brent about it to like actually being live with our first campaign. Um, he had him and his wife and mother-in-law basically created, I think it was a, a hundred of them. They ordered, you know, the, the led lights off of, um, or the ring lights off of Amazon and then, you know, put all the hair and stuff on that. Yep. And after when, when we first launched and that's literally in, in all of the, the businesses that I've started, it's like right at the beginning that, that first launch of campaign is like literally the most exciting part for me. Cause it's like, okay, we've done this work. We think we have this product, but now we're actually going to find out if, if this is going to work. And, uh, and so, yeah. And so in the first week we sold through them and we're like, Oh, wow. That's awesome. Okay. We, we have something here. And so then that's when I reached out with, to, um, to Corey who owns Tangle Free and, uh, he's, he's helped us manufacture it in China. Uh -huh. And, uh, so that, yeah, so that's, yeah. And it was, it was just, yeah, it's, it's a Great. fun, it's a fun it's, side business. Yeah. Obviously it's a little bit weird that. No, no. So, that so too, which type of marketing, <laughs> which, What's that? which type of marketing did you use for this? Was it push marketing or pull marketing? Yeah, no. So that's what I, yeah. So, so for this, it was just all push, right? Because like. There's literally, so the, the only thing that's out there that what, I'm sure there's more that's out there now, but at the time, the only thing that was out there was for, you know, like a, a, a professional uh, camera, right? That you could put over the lens, some sort of like animal thing that would go over the lens, but no, there was nothing for the smartphone user, which was the mass market, right? For, yeah, yeah. And so... Yeah. So that was, so for sure it was all Facebook and Instagram That's awesome. is what we, what we did. That's yep. great. Yeah. yeah I don't and, even and know I, how I would search for that. Like, it, yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Like it just needs to be shown to me. Yeah. That's a, that's a great, especially great when you've had the experience of trying to take a pictures or trying to take pictures of little kids, you'd be like, exactly. Oh dude, I totally need that. You know, <laughs> but you wouldn't know until it was shown to you. So yeah, it was awesome too. We get like a ton of uh, reviews of, people are just reaching out to us being like, Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Yeah. Like, well, and there's two sides of it. I, number one, I commend you for continuing the hustle and, and, you know, pushing out because 
you're using all your skills you've developed over the over the years, this talent stack you've created. But I also commend, you know, uh, the guys at Tangle Free for giving you the the not only encouraging you to do it, but even, you know, opening up their resources and manufacturing in China and helping you do that. And that what it's it's just a great back and forth between employer, you know, and and uh, your team and making everybody, ex- you know, you, you, you build a lot of loyalty and trust that way for sure. Absolutely. I mean, the, they're complete studs, you know, like they honestly, yeah, they're incredible. They've helped me a lot. Like, and they're just, I literally look at them as like my brothers, you know, like they're just legit people. And I've had, you know, partnerships in the past that have not been that at all. And there's, you know, and it, and, it, and honestly, like just working with like-minded folks that are like good people, genuine good people makes a day of work just like actually that much more productive too, you know, and it's, yeah. it's and, uh, more, and more enjoyable, right? And, way more enjoyable. And I think yeah. that's why it's more productive, right? Yeah. That it is more enjoyable that like, I'm stoked. I'm pumped. Like Monday, I don't, whatever. It's just another day in the week, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, and this, and the stuff that we're doing at Tangle Free is just transforming the business, and it's like just so exciting. And I feel like we're just getting started. Yeah, so let's yeah. let's talk about that. So, yeah. uh, tell us, you know, kind of, you, uh, if you can, in, in some broad strokes, you don't have to go into any, you know, top secret yeah. proprietary stuff. But ha- talk about the transformation because you know it was a relatively uh, older business that these guys took over and are you know totally. transitioning in all kinds of different ways. H- how is how have you guys done that and uh, the impact of digital marketing on it? Yeah, yeah. So um, obviously, like you said, I mean, Tangle Free has been a traditionally a wholesale business, selling to Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops and all that stuff. And um, just over the years, you know, there's there's a bunch of different reasons um, why the shift in the business. But you know, at the end of the day, um, the you know, the big box stores and even some of the independent dealers that were buying from us just slowly kind of, you know, it it just slowly kind of, uh, yeah, it really uh, wasn't working as well anymore. Right. right? It started to decline. And I mean, the reality is, is that folks are searching for this stuff online and purchasing online and that sort of thing. Less, less and less people are going to store for, for these products. And so it just makes sense. And so, uh, and this is what's awesome about the Tangle Free guys is that like they they make decisions you know what i mean like they're like legit you know let's let's do it like let's let's go after it let's let's understand the business let's look at the data and and really understand it but when it's time to make a decision they make a decision and that to me is awesome and you're just not going to get that in in the big corporate america right 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 and uh and so you know they basically and, and also in 2015, when we, we really started pushing the online side of it, I mean, it was substantial growth on the online side of the business. And this is prior to making a, a shift from a traditional wholesale business to a direct consumer business. Um, and so we had some data to tell us that like, there's legit volume here. And obviously me being a digital guy was like, yeah, I heard, like, let's go, you know, like, we don't need to wait. We don't need to talk about this anymore. Let's go. Uh, because that's all I've done for 16 years. And so, so we made a decision that, you know, we were going to go direct consumer and a big part of that, that decision was basically, you know, sustainable growth, like right at the time of being a, a wholesale business, you're relying on the Cabela's, the Bass Pros to, to put in an order, or even, even fulfill on the order that they said they wanted for this season. So you go and you have a bunch of product made and then, you know, you may find out that they actually don't need that much product. And now you're sitting on product and, you know, and the future of the business is really in these guys buying it when it's really the consumer that if we could get to the consumer that we could, you know, create a sustainable, own the customers and create a sustainable uh, business going forward. And so that was, that was really the push. I mean, it was multiple things and I didn't touch on everything, but it was, here's an opportunity. We can see it. And, you know, if we don't do this, there's a potential that the business might not be around if we just hold on to, 
you know, being a wholesale yeah. company. And so, we make that, yeah. Well, so with that, did you have to use both? Because, I mean, it, you know, waterfowl hunting is certainly getting some search. Did you wind up using a mix of that that pull and push? Uh, yeah, to, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So from, from a marketing side, I mean, you know, waterfowl hunting products are searched all of the time, right? People know that they need decoys. If you're getting into to duck hunting, like you need decoys you need bags, you need the gear. And those are all pretty commonplace, right? It, like that's, and so there's a high volume in search and we do really well with search. Um, and then on, you know, say the, the push side of things, it's a lot of it, you know, what's, what's awesome about uh, Facebook and Instagram is that you can, you can basically leverage your existing data to find more folks that that basically resemble the audience that buys from you using their using their pixel, yeah. and right? they want to, and, they, and the people that want to view your products and your content, right? And, yep. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, so that was so we. I mean, we spend you know just as much on Facebook and Instagram as we do on search. Um, and, and yeah, so yeah, we, we, and we have, you know, we're doing, we're also doing display, uh, through AdWords as well. Uh, we are totally focused on, on email right now, which is a huge channel. Yeah. You know? Let's talk about, let's talk about email, uh, yeah. it, it, you know, because I think it often it's cause it's been around for so long and, and we all get bombarded with so much, you know, stuff we don't want to see. Uh, I, I think there might be some mis conceptions that you know is it still a powerful way to connect with customers uh and and i know you guys use it a lot and what have you found is the best you know method to get your your voice heard you know amongst all the you know spam and everything else we get in our mailboxes yeah yeah it's funny i um i had someone tell me that email was dead about two years ago and it's <laughs> like what I can tell you is that email is not dead and we're actually allocating a lot of resources, you know, financially and everything into it because there's, there's just, there's a, a tremendous amount that you can do. And I think, you know, one of the things that, that I feel like we really want to be cognizant of as we approach, you know, expanding our email side of the business is not being like too intrusive, you know, and not sending an email a day, you know, based right. on, you know, the product set that we have and everything else. But it's, it's, it's more about, you know, extending like the customer service side of the business, which is, you know, you go into a store and if you frequent this store a lot, you probably know the people that work there. They probably know a little bit about you and what you like, you know, you may always purchase dog products or something like that. And it's basically taking that same philosophy from an email perspective is just creating like a relationship with our folks, our customers that are, you know, that are constantly purchasing from us and we're collecting the data and we, we know, you know, a little bit, you know, every time they purchase, we know a little bit more about them. And so it's more about providing you know, a communication that is that is very personalized to the customer based on certain things that they've done uh, in the past. And so that's really like for us, email is is just an extension of the business to, you know, make folks aware that maybe, you know, always buy dog products. I keep using this as an example, but, you know, it's pretty easy to, to understand that if someone is always buying a dog product that when we come out with a new, uh, you know, version of a product or a new dog product that they're, you know, being notified of that and just being smarter about how we're communicating and yeah. what we're communicating. Yeah. It's, it's, it's relevant and it's, you're adding value, right? That's right. Uh, not That's just exactly right. Yeah. And one yeah, of the things, exactly. yeah. Go ahead. So, well, one of the things I, I, I think you guys have done a great job is your, you know, 
you're telling a story, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, you're, you're kind of setting a tone and, uh, you guys are sponsored, you know, these, uh, short films and this, all this great content, uh, that's shared across the thing. And, you know, is, is that part of your, your overall plan is that, you know, getting that message out of kind of, you know, this is what we're about. And uh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, so this is also ties back into, I think I mentioned in the beginning, we have an editorial calendar. So we know next year, which is already, it's almost hundred percent complete that we have these projects that we're working on. And obviously before selecting these projects, if it's a film or, you know, conservation week or whatever it is that we have, you know, that we've, we've basically, we've identified that this story aligns with our brand and who we are. Um, and, and so if, if that is the case, if those things, if those two things connect the project and who we are as a brand, especially from like a video perspective, a line, then, you know, it gets put into the editorial calendar. And I, it's I just a stop, way. To, I want to stop you right there so that listeners are aware of this. You are a business that sells products to go and hunt and, and, you know, enjoy the process of hunting waterfowl. Yeah. And yep. you have an editorial calendar. I I run a publication called Mac Observer. We don't have an editorial calendar. I mean, we do, <laughs> but but like this is like most of the time. I've never heard the term editorial calendar used outside of the the the, the world of publishing. Right? Yeah. It, it, you've got one that goes way beyond where ours goes. Like I, we have an editorial calendar, but it's not going into next year like yours. Well, is. they're yeah. and they're publishing all the time. I mean, I I'm know. you know that. Yeah, it, it, it's but, fascinating. But that's yeah. just it is you are you see yourself it, it, like you take yourself seriously as publishers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is what allows you to to leverage this email list that you have among uh, other things. Right. Because you you've got content now that you can send out to these people. And it's not this add on that you're like, oh, crap, we got to write something for the newsletter. Timmy, go like spend 10 minutes and write something up so we can send it out. No, like this is a part of what you are, who you are, what you do. Like, this is huge. And it, it yeah. 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 No, it, it's, uh, it's definitely, it, it, it hasn't always been this way. You know, it's, it's basically our second year of, course. of yeah. doing the editorial calendar, but it just, it aligns everything, right? Like it aligns everyone. We're all on the same page. We know, we absolutely know, you know, at what times of the year we're going to do a promotion that gives me insight into when I need to start creating all the creative side, like the, you know, assets for that you know, uh, promotion, or if it's a new product that we're launching, we have that. And so we, I know, okay, I need to get this product to, you know, whoever's in California or whatever that hunts a specific species. And so that we can get some field shots so that when we launch this thing, we'll have those before and we'll be able to pepper it throughout our social and do all these things that we have in the editorial calendar. So it's just, it brings it all together. Like it's just all organized. And that's not to say that, the things don't change of and then we yeah. skip certain things, but at least we all know that these are the things that we're focused on. And, um, you know, it, it's okay if we, if we, if we don't actually launch this at this time, because we have some sort of issue or whatever, but at least we're all in the know on what needs to be done. That's so, awesome, man. And, yeah. and, and just, just for perspective, how many people work full time at, at Tango Free? <laughs> Yeah, so we have uh, six people in the okay. office, yep, and then we have uh, two people in the in the warehouse. Yeah, yeah. exactly. This lot. is this isn't a, yeah. a fifty or five hundred person company, folks. Yep. There's eight yeah. people. That's right. It's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. No, you can, right. but, but, I, but I mean, this is like you can do this. Anybody can do this with your small business. You just make it a priority and off it goes. And and like yeah. you said, just having a plan, even mm -hmm. knowing that giving yourself permission to change the plan as you go is not only fine, it's smart. But having one to start with keeps you from spinning your wheels. It's like, all right, well, we know what to do. We don't have to guess. And so let's just go do it. Yeah. yeah. Smart. Absolutely. Well, I mean. 
both you guys know and, and I, we, we could talk about this stuff all day, all <laughs> and, day long. And that, that, is, that is great i mean we're all enthusiasts about it so but as we start to you know wrap up here and and everything number one i just want to say i've totally learned the most which is always happens to me uh that's why i love the show but you know we've got thousands of other small business owners that are listening right now kirk mm-hmm. if you could offer you know one important bit of advice about digital marketing that you could leave them with what 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 would it be that they would remember after they listen to the show yeah i think man I, that's a that's a really tough question for me um because i think it's a couple of things but i would say like you know especially from a digital side number i'm gonna i'm gonna say a couple of things okay sure. uh, yeah no worries the the first thing is um, and it's because I, I've seen it so many times is m- just make sure that all your analytics are set up before you do anything, like make sure that you have your Google analytics set up correctly. If you're running an e-commerce store, make sure you have the e-commerce, you know, integration analytics. Um, if you're running Facebook ads, make sure you have the pixel firing correctly. Um, same thing with AdWords, all your, you know, pixel and and analytics data make sure that's clean because that's the basis of what you make decisions on going forward and and second i would say uh always test always test new new uh creative new content uh you know and and look for unexploited channels and and try to try to figure out ways you know, like I'm, I'm not going to tell you all the details, but I'm looking at, as an example, LinkedIn as an ad platform uh, for us to, to help with Tangle Free. And there's ways and there's reasons why. Um, and I can guarantee you that no one in the waterfowl space has even considered LinkedIn as an ad platform to leverage. They, they weren't until now. So, so <laughs> yeah. the clock just started ticking, man. <laughs> that's yep. right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but not in your, your, the manner you're thinking of, for sure. That's right. And that's why I'm not, I'm not disclosing that information. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. Uh, it, it, and, you know, it, it's, it's been fascinating. Uh, and I, I really have a lot of respect for all the different things you tried and that you've, you know, came power through this, power through that. And just you, you, you find more success and that's the way you do it. And that's the way you create, you know, wealth and you, you know, you just, you just better yourself. And I, I love hearing stories like this. And I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. And, you know, we, we ran a little bit long, but I don't think anybody will be complaining because it's such good information. <laughs> Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you guys so much, man. I appreciate you guys having me on here. Oh yeah, no, we're this gonna has have been great. Coming. Yeah, it has been. We'll have you on again. Uh, you know, folks, if you have questions for Kirk, you'd like us to pass on, just feedback at businessshow.co or you know, post them over at the small business support group at uh, businessshow.co slash Facebook. That'll get you over there. And uh, thank you so much for listening. And Kirk, thanks again for coming on. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate it, my friend. Oh, thanks, man. Yep, folks, we'll uh, we'll see you next week and uh, keep living that charmed life. Kirk's got good good advice on getting you there. Yeah.